Hey everyone, Port SM. Welcome to part one of my Gary Pashley Brothers in Arms Memorial Builds. So this is the Great War Hobby 172 F15E. So as I say, we lost our dear friend Gary uh, coming to a month ago now, I think it is. Um, and the idea was to build his favourite aircraft. So his favourite aircraft was F15. I bought this kit and I'm going to build it in his honour. Don't build many planes. I've got a stalled Mustang that's still lingering around somewhere. So I kind of want to get this done. Um, and the beautiful thing is I now own one of his own actual F-15s as well, which Simon very carefully found all the bits for. We got given a load of parts starter kits that were heading for the bin. And uh, Simon managed to near enough get all the parts for the F-15 uh, I IIF RAM uh, in 48 scale from Great War Hobby. So I did consider building this, but I kind of already started this. So this is more of a complex kit, but it's nice to have one of his kits that I can build for him at some point. It's a real personal thing to have. Um, so I'm very grateful for Simon for sorting this out. Thank you, mate. I know it took a lot of work for you to do. Much appreciated what you've done. And I will build this um, for Gary at a later date, definitely. So there's a lot of us taking part in this build. No everyone's building F-15. Some people are doing their own tribute, and that's that's great as well. Um, Alan's got a phenomenal idea coming up, and I'm really looking forward to seeing that one. Uh, but there's a lot of people involved who have never built aircraft before. So it's going to be quite interesting to see what people think, and hopefully we can get this one finished. We're going to make a hell of a lot of progress today. I've got a lot to get through, so let's uh, let's get straight in with looking at the kit. Hey everyone, please subscribe to the channel, click the bell notifications, get notified of our latest videos, give the video a thumbs up or a thumbs down, and leave a comment. I do read and appreciate every comment you guys and girls leave behind. I may not reply to them all, but they are all appreciated. And there's a link in the description of the video that takes you to a big long list of all handy videos and a lot of the products I use in my videos. You now have the chance to support the video content creation by using Patreon, or the PayPal me link in the description down below. All the videos will always remain free to watch. This is just your chance to help support the videos. Right then, Great War Hobbies 172 scale F15E. I've got the D-Day markings one. There's been a slight change of plan with this. I'm not going to do this scheme. I've got a different scheme which will be uh, explained in part two of this. But today we're going to get this all assembled, uh, primed, painted and ready for some paint effects next time. Nice decal set with the kit. Uh, obviously, we're not going to use most of it. Instructions are a bit weird. They're not a booklet. They're like fold-out pages. That you have to use page by page. This would have been the kit scheme, but obviously we're not doing this one. Instructions are clear and concise. Very random how they're not laid out in the book. They're just on separate sheets. So there's no way of making it into a booklet at all. So this is just a way you've got to do it. Uh, there's several steps in there for the gear up, gear down. Uh, different variants and what have you. We haven't got a fully loaded um, loadout in this one because of the scheme it is. I've been told it's correct, or it could be, so it's what we're going to go with. We've just got one uh, AIM-9 and one AMRAM, I think it is. Uh, these are the colours that the kit calls out for. And as you can see, the kit itself, really nice recessed panel lines, nice surface detail, uh, like the burner cans here, look really, really nice. Some nice detail. Obviously, there's pieces to go on the side of that as well. Excuse set my hands, fingers, etc. I've been decanting paint and it's all over me. Interior. Now, I didn't hold out a lot of hope for the interior. I am very pleasantly surprised at the end. It looks great. Uh, we've got one of our pods to go on it. We've got some fuel tanks. There are AMRAMs and our AIM 9s, I believe they are. We've got one of each. Uh, we could do another one, but we've only got one of each. Uh, and obviously, our drop tank, fuel tanks as well. So, nicely detailed. Clear parts are really, really nice. We've got seams on the center of each part. They're going to need to be dealt with. So we'll do that later in the video. But nice protective clear sprue over the top. So it was a nice touch. And then the rest of the parts here, we've got the nose, the air brake, etc. Landing gear, what have you. Some nice detail there as well. So overall, a good kit. I've got a full review of all these kits further back on the channel. It's a while back. I just thought we'd have a quick look at the box as a matter of course when we start the kit. There's our cockpit tub, uh, the instrument panels. We've got our... Um, I've even lost the parts. I didn't get a chance to look at them. Um, we've got our fuselage upper half here as well with our elevators and tail. 
Again, lovely recessed and raised surface detail. Very, very fine. You have to be careful you don't lose this in paint. And then the lower part as well as some pylons and other bits and bobs too. There's our front nose section there and some pylons. Like I say, there's a full review of all the other kits further back in the channel. We're going to have a look. These masks set are for the uh, invasion stripes ID bands underneath. We're going to need them. And then we're straight into the kit, as usual, cutting parts up. So I've got a lot to condense into this video. So we're going to be very fast fire today getting through everything. Seven components for the cockpit. You've got two seats, two sticks, two IPs, the cockpit tub itself, and the side walls that are built into the nose, this section here. Very minimal clean up, nothing really too technical at all. Most of it done with a 400 UMP thinny stick. Uh, just go around, get rid of the sprue points and clean it up so we're nice and clean. Uh, nothing to get a foul or assembly later on. Building aircraft is different to cars. You really need to check fitment. A little bit of focus here, but we've got the seats arranged together. Uh, glued, a little bit of Tammy extra thin. There's two side plates, a front section and the rear. Two of those. We've got our control sticks as well, which I opted to glue in place. Uh, I thought I'd paint these uh, in the grey colour, and we'll detail paint the top of them later. It was 172, and I wasn't holding out much detail in here but i'm very pleasantly surprised at the end it actually looks really really good for 72 scale all the parts cleaned up and mounted ready for primer got mr surface of 1500 black thinned with mr hobby leveling thinner about 60 percent 0.35 mil ump apex airbrush got about lower the pressure about 12 psi um it's going to put a couple of light coats down a primer let that dry over now and come back and paint i think later on so all these parts are going to be gray the only bits are going to be black other seats which we can sort later on but yeah take your time load the pressure here um just allow us to get in all the areas without blasting it in paint it is a smaller model uh the up apex does operate really well at lower pressures and it's putting down this surface primer really really well so just a couple of light coats and everything and that'll do is just fine like i say the seats are going to stay black we're just going to hand paint the uh cushion pads uh the bottle on the side and dry brush it uh, nice simple job on this Really easy, nothing too technical at all. Um, but quite a surprise amount of detail. I don't think there's any aftermarket needed. The seats are okay, they look quite good. Uh, the instrument panels and all the switches and that are decals. Oh, they look absolutely fantastic when they're done. So, quite a nice kit to build. Um, when we get to the fuselage, there's a few niggly bits on that, but hey, it's an aircraft, uh, it's a bit different to car models. So, hopefully, it'll go together quite well. But yeah, I have a couple of coats of this. Right, next day now, we dried overnight. We've got some Tamiya. This is my kind of loose interpretation of the colour. I think it's LP15. Uh, we're going to thin this with Tamiya like a thinner with Retarda. About 60%. Only done by eye. Mix it with our Badger paint mixer. And this will do as for our interior. I'm not going to get too hung up on colours on this. It's a darker grey. That's what I kind of called out for. So that's what we're going to use. I think you can get a bit hung up on colours. Uh, I do it myself sometimes. But for me, this will do just fine. So again, 12 PSI, just put some light coats down, building up nice and slow. Uh, we're going to paint everything bar the seat. Although, funny story, I accidentally painted one of the seats grey and then realised I had to repaint it black. So yes, pay attention to what you're doing. I think I was live at the time that I did this. I'm probably listening to some of the chat uh, um, going on in the, uh, in the live stream. So yes, I uh, accidentally painted one of the seats black. And had to repaint it. So just a couple of light coats building it up. No need to go mad. It's lack of paint dries really, really fast. Um, and then here we are. So this is in a, about six hours later now. Lack of paint dry really quick. We've got the kit decals out. Now, they don't look much when you get them on like this. Uh, but trust me, stick with them. Give them a bit of time. They're well worth persevering with. So we've got them on in place. We've got all the moisture out from underneath them. We've piled a load of UMP uh, Strong on top of them decal solutions just let it sit for a little bit then i put a little bit of extra strong on it just let it sit without manipulation left it alone and then after about 20 minutes give another brush over to brush the decals into place try and get them to conform because the surface detail is there we want these decals to conform to it that way they get the impression of the switch gear so that's what we've done so just some gentle application of decal solution don't go mad make sure the brush is nice and wet just keep loading it up, loading it up until you're happy uh, you've got enough in place. And then just leave it. Let it do its job. Let it sit and uh, get it all in place. So while that's doing that, we can do the IPs, get all the instrument panels all decaled up. A little bit trickier here to get these lined up. 
Uh, pretty straightforward though, to be honest. Just follow the instructions and you can't go wrong. The decals are really, really good. They're not too thin. They conform well. They wreck well to the decal solutions. So quite a nice, uh, quite a nice addition. Like I say, I'm pleasantly surprised just how good this looks at the end for a small 70-second uh, scale cockpit. Um, it's looked better than some 48s I've seen before. Um, so yeah, just take your time, go around, just build her up nice and slow, and get them all in place, and then hit them with the solutions, and just let them sit. No rush here. If you rush it, you'll ruin the decals. I've been guilty of that myself before. Just let the decal solution sit there and soften them all. Then you can come in later with your brush and get everything soft in, uh, set in place. And you can see there the decals have started to set in place. We've got this little decal that just goes over the uh, switches, the levers, just in place. A little bit tricky to get it lined up, but once you get it in there, same solution as before. Hit it with the extra strong and let it sit. Um, and then after a little bit of time, we can uh, come back and give it a little bit of heat as well. So you can see they've started to really conform well now. So we've got some extra strong UMP now. I'm just going to load a bit up on there. I'm just going to go around and just keep pushing down those decals so it conforms around the switches and the edges. Um, and yeah, that should all set in place. I'm a little bit off camera. I do apologize. I've zoomed in a little bit more today uh, to try and give us a bit more of an angle and missing a little bit here and there. It takes a bit of time to do. Uh, we've got a bit of heat here as well with our heat gun. All this is linked in the description down below. Give it a quick blast over, hit it with the solutions again, and get it in place. Now, I know a few you are going to say, mark an X on the mat. My mat moves around. I move it around through the day. And when you're modeling, sometimes the modeling takes precedence over the camera angle. If I'm having a problem with something, you know, that takes precedence over getting the part or decal in place. And sometimes you do kind of forget your film. The camera runs all day long. And it's very easy to forget. I've got some darkish gray here. I can't remember the exact color. I think it was around LP13-ish. Uh, I've got a dry brush, we put a load of it on there, wipe most of it off, I'm just going to go around and lightly dry brush the seat, and this should highlight some of the raised areas, and just add a little bit of depth to it, it's kind of like giving a wash, just add a bit of depth to it as well, and as you can see we painted the seat pads in green, and the bottle on the side, and a slightly darker green as well, again I completely forget the colours, do apologise, um, but yeah, just use it by your eye, a couple of dabs of CA glue, Get the seat in place, take your time again to make sure they're located properly. If you mislocate a seat, you can have problems later on getting other parts to fit. So just a little dab of CA glue, pop it in place. There we go. And then the IPs as well. Locate put at the bottom on each side. So just line it up, have a little check, and then get some CA glue, push it down, and it'll locate nicely in place, like so. There we go, copper's looking good, really good actually. Get the rear IP in as well. And again, just line it up. Nice and simple. There we go, make sure everything's positioned properly. And then there's a center instrument panel cover, shroud, whatever you want to call it, that goes over the top as well. So quite happy this came out, looks pretty good for a 172. Um, time to have a bit of a wash to it, so the decals have well and truly snug down now all over those IP uh, switch gear and what have you. They look really, really good. So we've got some Tamiya black panel liner wash. Now we're going to thin this a little bit with some Santador mineral spirits because it's a little bit too thick out the bottle, and this way it'll look just um, it'll completely flow a little better and won't look too heavy on the smaller model. So it's a case just going around, hitting all the raised areas, leaving it to dry for half an hour, come back with a moist cotton bud uh, with some Santador on it, and wipe it all off. And uh, it just adds depth to other parts, so it'll look quite good. There we go. So, yeah, just leave that to dry, and uh, it'll look good. Now, there are two other controls, uh, joysticks, as you could call them, that go either side of the co-pilot's seat. So, we left these off now because the decals went around them. Uh, pop them in place, I'm just going to hand paint them in a bit of a layer model colour uh, black. And again, they look great. You can dry brush those should you wish to. And there we go. There's our cop up. Pleasantly surprised just how good it looks for 172. It's not too bad at all. Like I say, I've seen much worse 48 scale. So it doesn't look bad at all, to be honest. So quite happy with that. A little bit of work. A little bit of a wash. Some careful decal application. That doesn't look too bad at all. Right, a couple of dabs of uh, Tamiya white glue now. Just a little bit thicker, slower drying glue. 
that will give us a chance to get this in, get it all positioned, to get the fuselage halves closed up. So just put a little bit one side, then on the other. Don't need to go mad here at all. We'll get the rest of it later with the uh, extra thin. Close the halves up. Fits pretty well this. No real problems at all. There's a bit of a problem with the wheel well. Doesn't quite fit in properly, but I think we'll have to get that with filler later on. Once you're happy, get the extra thin. This is my extra thin plastic weld mix. I just go over all the seams. A bit of glue. And then give it a quick squeeze to get all the uh, parts together. Make sure everything's located properly in that cockpit. If anything doesn't fit, it's probably you've got something in the wrong place. Then we've got the front radar section for the nose. Now, we're not going to put this in the nose. Uh, number one, because we're going to fill the nose with some weight. And number two, we're not going to have this open, so you'll never see it anyway. But this place is a structural part, I suppose you could call it. So it's going to be glued in place. And then the wheel well at the front, a little bit out of focus here. The wheel well in front, a bit of a crappy fit, to be honest. I did have to trim a little bit off, and it did fit a little bit better. But it's not a perfect fit. It's just one of those. You just have to accept it's not going to be a perfect fit. So I glued it in place. And should you wish later, you can run a little bit of uh, putty in there to give it a fill up. But it doesn't look too bad once you glue it in place, to be honest. Just don't go mad with the glue. The more glue you put down, the more you've got to clean up. So just let the capillary reaction take the glue and watch your fingerprints as well. Now, not only did the nose cone ping off, but we need to cut off these little locator points. These are either going to have it open, and we're not. We're going to have it closed. So I found cutting on an angle didn't quite do it. So let's cut a little bit more off than it fitted in place. But this is just a test fit for now because we're going to add some weight. So my usual method for nose weight is PVA glue. Sadly, I've run out of my large bottle. I gave it to Hannah for my little boy, and it's gone missing. So I've got the smallest PVA bottle glue in the world. Um, and we're going to add a bit of split weight, uh, split lead fishing weight in here now. Mix it all up and make a nice little mixture. Don't use anything hot for this. Don't use CA glue. Don't use Revel glue. Contact it. Anything at all. I've seen so many melted nose cones over the years. Because people put an abundance of glue in it that's either too hot or reacts. This is all you need. PVA and weight. That's it. Split shot weight. Buy a bag of it from the fishing shop or wherever and it will last you years. Uh, it's a case of just mix it all up so you get a good mix and then pour it in. So basically it's, it's like making a cake. So, you know, um, it's like you're filling the cake cup. So we pop it all in, get it all level out, stick it on gas mark four, put it in for half an hour, let the... Uh, it's settle, and uh, there you go. Should be good for a bit of icing, a bit of a jam, whatever you want to put on it. Um, I wouldn't advise eating this, though, at all. It is lead. Um, so, yeah, definitely don't eat this. It won't be taste nice at all. Uh, I didn't find it tasted nice either. It tasted horrible. And then, yeah, just prod it all down so it gets all settled nice and get it all level. And then leave that overnight to dry. Just leave it in there overnight to dry. Meanwhile, we've got the lower section of the under tub, we're going to call this. It's got a couple of seam lines just to the front. So we've got a UMP240 sponge sander. It's going to lightly remove those. If it with a buffer, I get rid of the seam lines on both sides. Nice and simple and easy. Not a lot of clean up needed on this, but we do need a little bit of filler later on because some of the fitment is questionable in places. So we've got a few parts, but we've got some pylons and sensors, intakes, and what have you to put on. So pop them in, or drop them like I did. And again, a bit of Tammy Extra Thin. This is my Extra Thin Plastic World Mix. I've got a video on this on the channel, should you wish to watch it. Okay, so just very carefully add a bit of glue around the edges. And then repeat on the other side as well. So while it's not quite as busy or as much to do as a 48 variant, still quite a bit to do for a 72nd. It's quite a well detailed kit. We're going for wheels down, so these front uh, wheel bays are closed like this. At least I hope they are. I'm following the instructions. They better be. So we just add a bit of tabby extra thin around the edge. Repeat that for both sides. Like so. And then a little bit of sand on the edge. And we've got two little plates to put in those holes just by my finger there. They just need popping in. A little bit of uh, time extra thin. Job done. But yeah, just go around. Make sure all the sprue attachment points are cleaned up because they will hinder fitment later on. So you may as well get rid of them now. Get them all gone in one session. And then the under 
pieces attach under the wings at the back. Again, not a bad fit. A little bit of a bigger gap on one part of the uh, wing than the other. But it is what it is. We can chuck a bit of a layer of putty in later on. But overall, the fit's not too bad. Again, we had our Tamiya Extra Thin uh, Plastic World Mix in here. No need to press it home. We don't really want to sprue uh, piling out the side. We just wanted to um, capillary action in and glue it. And then same around the back as well. Just get all these glued in and then we can repeat that for the other side too. And then on the sides there's a little seam here. That will be hidden by the elevator. And then a lot of this other seam here will be hidden by the uh, ailerons. Um, so it shouldn't be too much trouble. Intakes here. You've got two different sets of intakes. You've got to pick whether the gear up, gear down, I think it is. Um... Two little sections to put in these are handed as well just make sure you get the right ones make sure you look at the right call out on the instructions as well to a make sure you get the right ones and b make sure you get the right side as well uh, and just gently glue everything in clean everything up as required and then while we're here i might as well sand these seams it's been drying for a good few hours so pretty much good not too bad at all i'm not going to go mad on the back i'm not going to attempt to fill all the back you're not going to see any of it at all, really. It's all covered by the elevators and the uh, um, aileron flap things, whatever they're called. I forget now. Ailerons, isn't it? That's the word I'm looking for. Uh, and then we can attach the lower to the upper. So we'll put the intakes in there as well. And the back clips in place. Again, not the best fit. A few gaps here and there. But overall, it fits in place. Not too bad. I've built much worse kits in the past. Um, it just needs some careful placement. I would advise dry fit and everything um, just to test fit first. But overall, it's not too bad. It's in a bit. It gets a bit ropey where there's smaller parts to put in place. You need to be careful of assembly, and it does get a little bit tricky. Nose cone. All the nose weight is dried now. You can tell it's dried if you pick it up and uh, it doesn't fall out. So that's dried. So a quick test fit again, and then a quick run round with... Uh, the extra thin don't press on it at all this is a natural seam line uh, panel line so we don't want to get any more sprue hanging out We're just holding it in place gently at the minute and again test fit in as well to make sure it fits which it does perfectly a little bit of a gap at the bottom. We can get that with the, uh, the glue later on. So not too bad at all. And then these intakes here as well. So some careful gluing. Make sure everything lines up. There's two pieces at the side that go on the intake first. And then form the outer edge of the fuselage just there. They're quite tricky. They don't fit perfectly. So get them to fit as good as you can before you commit to glue. It's that piece exactly there that I'm uh, gluing in place. It's got the Vulcan cannon in it. I believe it's a Vulcan can, I think so. But we can deal with that later. Now, we're going to get rid of all the glue marks first. So we've got a UMP uh, 240 sponge that we're not going to sell, unfortunately. We were going to, but we're not now. See, 240 sponge sander. And then after everything's dry, I've got my razor saw, and I'm just putting in, although the panel lines are a bit large because of the gap, I'm putting them into the neat, and then we'll put some below putty in later. Which, when I put it in and remove the most of it, it'll shrink and should hopefully give us a little bit of a panel line back that doesn't look as crap as what we've got now. Same on the air brake, we've got a little bit of uh, adjustment needed there, so pop the air brake in place like so. My Velo putty is blocked, being an absolute pain in the Aris. So, uh, yeah, it will unblock, tried everything, and then it unblocked at the end. So, brilliant. So, go to uh, plan B, which is cocktail stick. And we'll get the putty out manually instead. So it's going to putty anywhere that needs it. Um, there's a big gap this side there. You can see it right there. So it's going to pop the putty in. We're not going to sand it at all. So you don't need to be ultra careful where you put it. But we're going to put it in. We're going to fill the hole. We're going to use a moist cotton board to remove all the excess. And hopefully leave that big gap filled. And it leave a kind of hmm, okay looking panel line without too much faffing around because to sand that would be a bit of a nightmare so i definitely didn't lick that cotton bud at all that is not spit on there all that didn't lick that either make sure you do lick the right end if you do that because the putty doesn't taste nice i'm just going to wipe off i didn't lick that either 
we're just going to wipe off all the uh, excess putty until we're left with a nice smooth blemish free finish and that's it that will shrink a bit because the putties do shrink and it should go back a little bit and again we'll fill in these here as well move the excess the putty will shrink and it should bring back a kind of natural ish panel line so that's the plan so another moistened cotton bud what is i have a little bowl around my neck with water and that's where i'm dipping it in definitely not licking it 100 percent. definitely not licking it i did lick that one either um i'm just wiping it all off that's the easiest way to do it um it comes off really easy to put even when it's semi-dry like that you can see that i just wipe it off there we go it's gone so it's nice and easy to do and quick and simple as well so hopefully this will avoid a lot of the nastiness so i'll clear my nozzle now my noozle's clear and now we use the putty as we should take it down don't lick that cotton bud there we go and then we can smooth it down push it into the gap don't lick that either and just keep going until he seems gone you pick and choose where you need to do it you can tell by eye where it is and if you can't when you primer it it'll soon become very apparent so uh just take your time fill in the holes and any gaps and as you can see underneath a little bit of a prominent gap there don't look at either and um we can just get rid of all the excess and leave behind just that little bit of putty which should hide a multitude of sins and i definitely didn't lick that either um and there we go so that's a cheating way of doing it now we've got ailerons now there's two here and i forget the names now one's an aileron what's the other one someone let me know in the chat is it a flapper on is it i can't remember what they're called now see i'm not built aircraft for ages i can't remember what things are called so we're getting these in place anyway. They fit quite well. We've got a quick uh, run over with some Tamri Extra Thin Plastic World Mix glue. Just to glue them in place. Don't want them positioned in any way, shape or form. So this is perfectly adequate. Same on the other side as well. This one's going to fall out. Or did I cut that bit out? I think I cut that bit out. It doesn't fall out. There we go. Look, I made myself look really good there. Whereas the other bit just before that, the bit actually fell out. Should have left it in, shouldn't I? Would have been funny to watch. Anyway, that went in flawlessly, didn't fall out at all. And again, just a bit of Tammy Extra Thin Mix in place. And that's that glued in place. And then our elevators, uh, they have a little pin to go in place. Position them where you want them. Hit them with the Tammy Extra Thin. Hold it for a second, let the glue get a hold of it. Do the top. Just go down. Now, if you do get the excess glue, don't touch it. Leave it alone. Just make sure you get this positioned where you want it. You can remove the excess glue later with a buffer. Uh, it's fairly simple. And then repeat for the other side as well till you're happy they're in place. They're both roughly in the right position. There we go with our tails as well. So I'm not sure if these are handy, but this one looked better on this side. Don't ask me. I have no idea. And there are two pieces that go on top, which I don't show in this video. But there's a piece on the top of each one. Again, keep referring to your instructions. Make sure you're getting all the right parts in the right place. And then you need to get these vertical, so get them all in and just keep checking that they're straight. And again, if you think it needs a bit more glue, just hit it up again. And there we go. Now the nose in, we've got the nose section in place. Gonna run a little bit of glue over the top, nice and gentle. We'll end up with a little bit of a gap at the bottom, but what we'll do is we'll push that in as we glue it. So you can see a little bit of a gap. We load up our brush, take it through, and then give a little bit of a push. Now I'll take a little bit of the gap out, but we'll also put a bit of thin air filler in as well. Same technique as before. And it's just going to make the best of a situation because what was the other option here? We'd have to fill it, completely resand it, completely rescribe it. I've not got time to do that. I want to build the plane. This is what I want to do. I want to build it, paint it, enjoy it. Not worry about every fundamental little bit. Now, that's just the way I roll. Actually, the way I roll is head down, arms tucked in, limb forward. That's how I roll. But when I'm modeling, I roll like this as well. Pylons now. We've got all the pylons to go in place. There's several to go in. We've got these main ones that go on the inside of the fuselage. And there's some on the side as well. So just get them all cleaned up using your sanders of your choice. For me, it's our UMP thinny sticks. Of various grits we've got a 240 and a 400 here just go around make sure you get all the sprue points off and then we can pop it in place and again 
give it a quick whiz over with the Tamiya Extra Thin Mix. Make sure it's glued in place, like so. Same on the other side as well. And then these ones on the side, they have no positive locating point. There's just little marks of a fuselage. So you need to get them lined up, kind of get them to bounce there on an angle while you hit them with the extra thin. Just make sure they're all straight. We're actually going to use these ones, but we're going to put them on. And then onto the canopy. Now, as I mentioned before, the canopy does have a seam line through it. So we need to deal with this. This is the way I deal with it. There's several other ways you can do it. You can scrape it, you can mask it, wherever. This is how I'm going to do it. And it came out pretty flawlessly at the end. So we clean up all the sprue points. And I sped this up because it was a couple of minutes long. We've got our 220, uh, 240 grey thinning sponge here. I'm just going to very lightly sand over that seam until it's gone. As you can see there, it's very nearly gone. Now on the front section, it runs over the actual screen at the top. And then right down the piece that attaches to the fuselage as well. So you need to get rid of that too. But just gentle sanding, no real pressure here at all. Just build it up nice and slow. And then we come with our buffer with the blue side first. And be very careful, these parts break easily, so don't apply a huge amount of pressure. Not the worst in breaking the canopy, been there and done that before. It is not fun. And then spin it around to the white and give it a good buff up. Now, if you need to repeat, do it again. Do it again, no problem at all in doing it again. And then we're going to hit it with some Novus polish. Now, Novus is especially made for polishing plastic. Works absolutely fantastic on clear parts because that's where it polishes on aircraft. Uh, like I say, if you need to repeat, repeat this. You can repeat polish again. You're going to use the uh, red and the green, I think it is, the coarse and the fine on the Novus just to give it a good polish up. And then the same on the front as well. We've got the bigger buffer here, though. Sorry, no, we haven't. We've got the uh, thinny stick as well. This is the one to be careful of with any pressure because this is the one that will crack quite easily. I'm just going to go around and make sure we get rid of that seam, hit it with the buffer again, and then hit it with the Novus polish to try and gap. Now, people are going to say you can dip it, you can dip it in future, yada, yada, yada. You do what you want. Whatever you've done before, you do it. I never see the point in doing the future. I can get them pretty good. They do respond really well to a polish. So we've got a nice clean cotton cloth. We've got some Novus, uh, the harsher stronger polish and then we'll move on to the fine polish later on uh, i just go around and gently polish polish the whole thing right there uh, if you polish the whole thing it will be beneficial you'll see it all and by the time you've done this it should be pretty floor free if it's not you can repeat the polish again you can repeat the sand again etc etc you use your judgment and you figure out what you need to do so just polish like normal wipe all the excess off then use the finer one wipe all the excess off and at the end, clean it up with a nice clean cloth until you're happy with the finish. This is the finer one now. This is like the finishing one. And like I say, you can repeat, you can redo again, you can resand again, you could use micro mesh, even finer, to get a much more finer finish. But for me, this worked well. I can't see any physical scratches in the canopy. I would give it a quick buff up at the end with a clean piece of cloth. Overall, probably took me 10 minutes to do this, and it came out pretty well. Like I say, should you feel the need to repeat, you can. Now, masking. There are masking sets out there. I had a look. It was £7 for the masking set for about four pieces of masking. I thought, I'm not paying that, so I'll do it myself. So I've got some Tamiya uh, 1 mil uh, tape here. I'm just going to go around and mask all the canopy by hand. It's pretty easy to do. Again, you've got to be careful of the canopy. Make sure you get everything lined up. So, past experience pays off dividends here. I've done this many, many times. So, it's going to take up the edge, snip it after marking the edge of the canopy with our fingernail. You should get a mark on the masking tape. And when you trim it, it should fit perfectly. And then we can go all around, following it around to the front, to the back, a little bit of a curve at the front, and then trim it with the scissors again. And then you'll fill the rest with bigger masking tape. Quite simple, quite easy and straightforward to do. If you find you can reuse smaller parts, and then like I say, we've got some larger 6mm tape here to infill the rest. So it's just the back part of this, the rest of it will be grey, fuselage colour. And then the main canopy itself, exactly the same trick. We use the 2mm tape on this one though, to go around the edge. 
and just take it down, especially on this part. This is the one that's easy to break because of the shape of it. Any stress or pressure in the wrong area will cause it to crack or break in half. Just really take your time here, but do make sure you do a good job of masking the canopy. Very, very prominent part of the aircraft. One of the first points somebody will look. So if you've not done a good job, it will be quite apparent. And again, grab our scissors, just trim the edge, and then we can infill all the rest with the Tamiya tape until we're happy it's done. So quite straightforward, really. You can buy the mass set should you wish. To be honest, on things like this, it's not really a complex shape. If I was doing a zero or something with dozens of little tiny squares, then I might be tempted then. Uh, but for this one, quite straightforward, really. Just a case of lining it all up and using the straight edges. Fairly simple mass set, to be honest. Uh, nothing too demanding. And there we go. So that's it. We'll repeat that for the front now. And like I say, infill the rest with tape. Like so. That's it. Not too bad. Again, didn't take too long to do. It wasn't too tricky. Obviously, if you've never done it before, it's going to be, seem a bit more difficult or a bit more daunting. But overall, pretty simple, really. Just take your time. Just be careful and worry of breaking the clear part. It is easily done. Trust me, it's very easily done. And just make sure you do as good a job as you can in masking. Then there we go. So de-seamed and masked up, ready for attaching to the fuselage. Now there's a bit of framework underneath. Uh, I actually forgot about these. So this needs cleaning up. Uh, there's also the head-up display for the front as well. I'm just going to very quickly clean this up. The coats are Mistosa black again. Um, the pain of forgetting is having to paint things separately, but hey, Happens from time to time, and uh, just got to roll the punches and deal with it. So with that cleaned up into the spray booth, like I say, a couple of coats of um, surface of black again. Low pressure is working really well. Never really sprayed as low as 12. Um, always been around 18, 20 psi, but it was working quite well. So we'll see how this goes in the long term. But with a couple of coats of black on these. These are going to stay black as well, so we'll dry brush them like we did with the seats. Quite simple to do, really. And then we can get on to attaching our canopies. So the first one we've got in place with a clamp. Just a very gentle clamp to hold it in. And we're going to tamiya extra thin this in. Now you need to be very, very careful if you do this. Because if you get too much in, it will run up on the inside. You just want the capillary action to run around the edges. So just touch it and let it flow. And then leave it clamped and leave it the hell alone for a while. I'm not even going to put the back one on yet. Um, we're going to let this fully dry. So just let the tamiya extra thin. Get a hold of this. Don't go mad with the glue. There you go. So the computer action, just touch it. Let the computer action carry it in. Left that dry for a couple of hours now. And then we're going to test fit the rear one. Now the rear one does have a little bit of spring to it. So it's going to need a little bit of tape to hold it down. The rear one we're going to hold in with Deluxe Materials Glue and Glaze. Because always have an out. Although I'm going to probably keep the canopy shut. Um, if you have a wash that gets in there. But too much has happened before to me. You don't want the canopy sealed shut. So we're going to use some glue and glaze on a cocktail stick and just gently put some all around. And then we'll put the canopy on. Use a bit of masking tape to hold it in place until uh, the glue sets. So don't rush this. It's probably going to have to be left overnight. So do this in one of your last modeling jobs of the evening. But just be uh, you know, cautious. Don't put too much on. You don't want tons of it on there. But you just want enough on there that will hold the canopy on. So just putting it down, put a generous amount on. Some of it will squeeze at the side, so we can wipe off the excess later. And even if it dries, you can wipe it off later as well. It's only PVA-based glue, so it will come off pretty easily. So yeah, be generous with the glue. Don't go mad, though. You just want a generous amount all around the edge, from front to back, like so. so there we are. And then we pop our canopy in place. A little bit of tape on top. Make sure the back's located, front's located, it's all central where we want it, and then hit it with the tape. Might get a little bit of glue under the tape. Like I say, we can get any excess glue off later really easy. A little bit of our uh, UMP airbrush cleaner will take off no problem. And just make sure it's all in place, it's fully pushed down. Like I say, any excess glue, we can get a cotton bud, we're not going to lick it, and then we can wipe off any excess glue here. Like I say, we do get anything left behind later on. Some new pair brush cleaner on a cotton board. We'll get rid of that really easily. Again, leave this overnight. We're going to leave that tape in overnight. And then when we come to prime the next day, uh, we can take the tape off and prime. So we've got Mr. Service of 1500 black. Thinned as always with Mr. Hobby Level and Thinner. 
Uh, 12 PSI on the UMP Apex, 0.35. Got a little clamp on the inside holding the aircraft. Didn't work out too well this, so we switched it later to a reverse tweezer up its jimmy hole. And um, yeah, quite easy to do, quite simple. And um, yeah, just light coats, don't go mad. I'm not trying to hose it on in one coat, just take your time. There we go, I'm switching out the clamps. There we are, much better. It's going to move around a little bit, as long as you're careful, you're fine. Like I said, we're not trying to get it primed in one coat, just put a coat down, move around, do everywhere. Make sure you get the fronts and backs of the wings and everywhere else. All little recesses and angles, you need to make sure that you get. Just put a couple of coats down. Make sure you got your spray booth on, you got a respirator on, a glove. Keep your hand covered and just get nice, even coats of paint down. On here now, if there's any flaws anywhere, any panel lines, any seams you're not dealt with. This is where you'll see them. So take your time here, have a look if you need to. Let it dry, resand it, reprime it. It's not a drama at all to do. Uh, and then I'm just going to put a, a two, three light coats down on the whole thing. Uh, just build it up nice and slow. We'll then leave that for a few hours to fully dry. Being lacquer dries really quick. And then here we've got Mr. Hobby C305. Uh, this is the FS3. 6118 that we're going to put down on the paint and again exactly the same as with servicer we're not trying to get it all in one go we're just going to put a light coat down working our way around come back and probably put two three light coats down in total uh in preparation for our weathering which we'll do in the next part so we'll have some paint mottling to do some paint fading some highlighting and then we'll tie it all together with a thin the highly thin coat of the original colour and hopefully make the paint look a bit interesting. There's lots of ways you can do this. You can pre-shade beforehand, you can mottle beforehand. This is the way I've near enough always done it and I'm just going to keep going my way. There's no right or wrong way, just whichever way suits you the best and this is where we're going to do it. It's going to be a bit more difficult on a 172 but we've done it before and I'm sure we can do it again. But we're going to save this for the next part because we're coming up to over 40 minutes already. Um, we've got quite a lot of work done. I'm quite happy with the amount of work done. The build's gone together quite well. It's looking okay. Not the best kit in the world to build. It's got a few flaws here and there. But overall, it's gone together quite well and easily. And there we go. Two, three light coats. And there's our grey all over. Nicely even coated. If you miss anywhere, just give it another light go over. Don't hose the paint on. We've got to be very careful we don't lose those panel lines. But there we go. That's us for part one. Right then. So I think I was on not a bad job there. Anterior turned out a lot better than I thought it would. It seriously did look good. Um, quite surprised just how good it looked, to be honest. Uh, we've made good roads, inroads into starting that. I mean, to get it painted in part one, that's good going for me. That really is. Um, so in part two, we can come back. We'll uh, get the paint effects down. So we got a panel fade, post shade, mottle. And then we'll dust over the original colour. Hopefully get some paint colours down. I really, really don't want to clear coat this. Um, but on the same thing, I really don't want to suffer with any silver. Because the paint's smoothish. With aircraft, you get paint swirl and everything. You get powdered paint. So I don't know what to do. I might clear coat it. But I've got some very nice decals I bought from Two Bobs. I think it was. Um, I'll look at those next time. I've got about 15 different schemes to choose off. And there's some very, very cool ones in there. So I've got a bench update to do in the meantime. I might do that. I'll have a little bit of a chat and help me decide. But obviously, this is my friend Gary. Uh, it's 494th Squadron, not 493rd, which is a squadron he loved. Um, but it's as close as it can do. Um, as good a job as it can do. So I might show them a bench update um, later in the week. But part two, we're going to get it all painted, decaled, um, Maybe we've got a lot more done. I don't know where we'll get on that one. We'll have to stay on that one. Um, but yeah, I don't know when that'll be up. I'd quite like to get back to Suzuki next. And I'm going to start a car kit as well. So watch this space. We'll see what comes up next. But very happy with the progress made on that. It's definitely a good start on that one. And uh, hopefully we can keep the motivation. Uh, because it's for Gary doing it. To get this one finished. Because it's nice to build aircraft. I still love aircraft. My heart wants to build aircraft. My head's just not in it. Just doesn't want to do it something about it i don't know what it is some weird mental block but hopefully you never know it might be a stepping stone I might go back to the mustang after this and get it done i just love building cars really do um but we need to get back to the suzuki as well we've made a really good start on that but i really want to start a car 
I kind of want to build that single Porsche that we uh, reviewed the other day. We'll get back to that one. Anyway, as always, if you'd like to uh, support the videos, there's a Patreon me, a PayPal me, and a Buy Me a Coffee link in the description down below. All the links down there as well include all the products I use in my videos and links to the ISM Facebook page and forum, umpretail.com, the Paul ISM daily live stream uh, Facebook page, Paul ISM offer hangout group, and the International Scale Modeler GB page as well. And a link to my own personal modeling page is there as well. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up or a thumbs down, should you wish. Subscribe to the channel and please leave a comment. Obviously, I'm building aircraft, so I'm expecting to see a few different people here. It'd be great if you could leave a comment for me. And the question for today, let me have a think. What kits do you struggle with, mojo-wise? What is the kit you want to build, but it's your, your heart's in it, but your head's not? Or the other way around, your head's in it, but your heart's not? What kit is your kind of kit you really want to do? But you just can't bring yourself to do. Let me know. Obviously, for me, it's aircraft. Bikes aren't too bad. Armor, I don't mind too much. I got back into armor a little bit and enjoyed those. Aircraft, though, got a real mental block of those. So let me know what yours is as well. Enjoy the rest of the day, everyone. Take care. Bye bye.